I'm sure you remember this configuration of vectors from an earlier lesson. And what was interesting about having four vectors is that they seem to be linearly dependent in more than one way. We notice that B is the sum of A and C. That relationship is captured right here algebraically. And D is the difference of C minus A. And that relationship is right here. But we didn't stop there. We also noticed that C is the average of B and D. And that raised the obvious question of, well, just how many relationships are there? Are there three? Are there four? Are there perhaps infinitely many? Well, we didn't quite answer that question then, and we won't answer it completely now. We will in the near future. But for now, we'll take a decisive step towards answering that question, and we'll do it by introducing a very important and extremely beautiful concept of the null space. So here is how you should think about it. Linear dependence means that one of the vectors can be expressed as a linear combination of the rest, which can be rewritten as a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. So that's exactly what I did here. I rewrote each one of these relationships as non-trivial linear combinations that equal zero. And I also arranged them in a very neat way because for the concept of the null space, you should think of this set of vectors as an ordered set. In other words, one of the vectors is designated as first, another as second, third, and fourth. And of course here, I did it alphabetically. And now we can ask the following question. What can we do with these linear combinations? It turns out all sorts of things, all sorts of linear algebra things, which means we can multiply them by numbers and add them together. Let's start with multiplication by numbers. We can take this relationship and multiply both sides by two. So on the right, of course, we'll still have zero, but on the left, we'll have two a minus two b plus two c equals zero. And that gives us a new linear combination that equals zero with coefficients two, minus two, two, and zero. A brand new linear combination. And of course, that relationship is correct. We can see it algebraically, and we can also check it geometrically, and it'll work perfectly fine. This is algebra and geometry working together. Let's try the same thing with this relationship multiplied by 7, and we would have 7a plus 0b minus 7c plus 7d equals, once again, 0. Another relationship, uh, non-trivial linear combination that equals 0. Of course, it's true algebraically, and it will also work geometrically. They're new, but kind of boring. Maybe we can get something totally new if we try addition. And in fact, we do. So if we add these two relationships, here's what we'll have. We'll have 2a minus b, the c's cancel, plus d equals zero. Let's write it down. 2a minus b, the c's cancel, plus d equals zero. Now, of course, it's true because we derived this algebraically, but let's just confirm that it makes sense geometrically. 2a minus b plus d. a is right here. 2a goes beyond the shot. But when you subtract b from that point, you end up right here. And of course, when you do plus d, sure enough, we arrived at zero. So we're here, we have a brand new linear combination that was not so easy to see geometrically, that gives zero. So this really means that these linear combinations have a life of their own. They have a linear algebra life of their own. You can think of a linear combination as an object and even as a vector. It might take just a moment to wrap your mind around this, but linear combinations that give zero really are acting like vectors in a sense that you can add them together and get a new linear combination that equals zero. And you can also multiply them by numbers and get another linear combination that equals zero. So they're very much vectors in their own right. And of course, linear combinations are fundamentally about the coefficients. So we can't help but associate a linear combination with an element from R4, a set of four numbers, one, for each one of the vectors from the ordered set of vectors. So for instance, this linear combination 
would be associated with the element 1, negative 1, 1, 0. So let's write it right here. 1, negative 1, 1, 0. A perfectly good element from R4. And this one right here would be associated with a vector 1, 0, minus 1, 1. 1, 0, minus 1, 1. And what we've learned is that we can obtain other vectors from the same space of non-trivial linear combinations that equal 0. And you can even throw the trivial linear combinations into the mix. By the following operations, we can multiply any one of these by a number. So, for example, this one can be multiplied by any number alpha. And this one can be multiplied by any number beta. And then, of course, once you have two linear combinations, you can add them together. So, what this expression represents is the space of all possible linear combinations that yield zero. They really, truly are vectors. And not only are they vectors, they're actually a subspace of R4. Of R4. What subspace is it? Well, it's the span of these two vectors. A span is always a subspace in its own right. And when we discovered two non-trivial linear combinations that yield zero, any linear combination of those linear combinations, it sounds like a mouthful, but it's really not that complicated is also a linear combination that equals zero. So they truly are a space. And how do we know that it's two-dimensional? That two is enough, is that any other linear combination that equals zero can be captured by an expression like this. In other words, can be obtained by finding suitable values of alpha and beta. Well, that's the part of the question that we'll answer at a later time. But now it's time to introduce the term itself. And I think you can see what's coming. And it's that this subspace of R4 is called the null space associated with these four vectors. So every set of vectors gives birth to a subspace of R4. And that subspace represents all possible linear combinations, the trivial one included, that yield zero. And that subspace is called the null space. This concept will prove crucial for solving linear systems or equations, analyzing linear transformations, and really for much of linear algebra.